And here we are coming to the closing talk of our conference. And we welcome Mohamed Daud. And he is actually adding the, completing the variety of this session because we started with sensing, then we went to quantum computing, we came back to, to sensing one more time, and now we are back to quantum information and quantum internet. So, uh, Mohamed will tell us about topologies uh, that can be maybe useful and better topologies that would suit to the quantum internet in the future. Welcome, Mohammed. The stage is yours. Thank you, Adriana. Uh, this is uh, this topic was uh, part of my uh, graduate uh, research thesis, and uh, it's under the uh, supervision of uh, Dr. Aisha Khalik, uh, who is at NAST. I'm a student at NAST, uh, Pakistan, and Dr. Peter Rodi, who is at UTA. And let me just give a brief outline. First, I'll talk about motivation. That uh, why do we need to think about quantum internet right now. And then I'll talk about uh, what are networks and how do we connect uh, networks and topology uh, with classical and quantum nature. And then uh, entanglement distribution is one of the ways that uh, we can uh, achieve this uh, uh, future quantum internet. And uh, utilizing that, uh, considering uh, entanglement distribution and topologies, then we can think about it as a routing problem uh, between users. So there are uh, uh, this work is basically based on uh, Dr. Peter's uh, QNET package. Uh, there is a reference in the talk uh, that you can get. So he presented uh, three uh, uh, routing uh, uh, algorithms, which is one is single path routing. Uh, and multi-path routing and multi-user routing. Then the last two topics are uh, of my own uh, working. I made a comparison between the lattice and the tree network. And, uh, and then uh, I presented the deployability of the networks, uh, uh, keeping in mind of my city, Islamabad. So let's see. Uh, so basically, if we go back around, uh, let's say, 60 years back, so there was no internet and everything was starting. Uh, so there were this big, uh, big computers uh, of uh, one is TX2 and uh, Q32. They were at MIT and uh, get, uh, Cambridge, I guess. So uh, with uh, researchers, they, they came up with the idea that let's connect them and uh, do distributed computation and uh, uh, use telephone lines as a communication link. And uh, this was a, a success, and that lead, led to a, a wider project, ARPANET and Sputnik. Uh, Sputnik uh, is a Russian project, and ARPANET was a, uh, uh, an American uh, project, and that really connected in uh, the around 50 to 60 computers together. So, uh, due to their success and due to their importance, uh, the almost all of the world around in like 30 years, uh, where uh, 30 years, uh, like in 1970s, there were uh, 60 to uh, uh, 50 to 60 computers connected, and 30 years later there were 2.4 uh, 2 billion people connected. So, uh, if we look at t today's uh, quantum science and the quantum information. So now we have long distance uh, key distributions that give us secure communication uh, and uh, NIST computers, they really uh, push us to think about uh, distributed quantum uh, computation and there, there is a lot of work going into quantum memory and uh, once you have a quantum memory, it's like a, a USB drive and you can just uh, keep a quantum memory and move around to, from computer to computer and uh, that would make a sneaker net. But sneaker nets are not uh, so efficient, so we have to, one day we have to look at the quantum internet. So the difference, uh, simple difference between uh, classical internet and uh, quantum internet, it is the underlying networks. So a classical internet, usually it really wants to find the shortest path between any two users, 
whereas a quantum network uh, wants to find the best path which uh, which gives us the best uh, fidelity and the best uh, efficiency. But we need to keep in mind that uh, we can increase the fidelity uh, using the purification. But uh, there is no counterpart of purification in classical networks. So there is a, uh, it, there are different ways of uh, uh, keeping a check, like hash functions and other in classical networks. But uh, they are not uh, good in sense of uh, they, I I don't think that they can be implemented on a quantum internet. Uh, but purification is one thing that can. Uh, that has been tested and it is a very great uh, a great resource uh, for entanglement distribution. So basically our goal here is to utilize the network uh, to our benefit uh, and uh, see what kind of trade-offs that we are getting. So let's move on to what is a network. Uh, in a mathematical term, network is a graph which have uh, some vertices, uh, V vertices and uh, uh, e edges. So basically, an edge is uh, uh, so basically an edge is a link between uh, two vertices. So if you look at A and C, so there is a link between A and C. So that is an edge. And if you uh, there is an associated weight of one to this edge, so it's called a weighted edge. So a route is basically a path uh, between two users or two nodes and uh, the way to find this the shortest path like which is the shortest path uh, it is the uh, extra shortest path algorithm it uses a heuristic approach uh, uh, to the problem and uh, uh, coming to the topologies how topologies we affect this uh, so let's say first i have given a linear topology the linear topology is the a simple one it's a straight line and all the nodes the problem with this topology is that all the nodes that are between source and user are basically useless they will only act as repeaters and they will not behave as uh, users themselves so it cannot work for more than one uh, pair uh, then we can say okay let's make a tree network and they there's a chance of uh, path finding. So, for example, if uh, these two uh, nodes are the communicating partners, so they can use this, uh, uh, this parent node as a, a repeater and establish entanglement between them. So, basically, uh, the problem with three, uh, again, we can have multi users in that, but uh, the problem is that uh, there is only one path between. Uh, users and if that path is not too efficient, so uh, it is not uh, very much beneficial for us. Then there is a, uh, a good topology, it's a grid like topology, and this allows us to have many multiple users and also multiple uh, paths between them. So, how, how do we uh, really find the path? So, a path is basically uh, uh, we choose. There are different paths, but we choose the shortest path as uh, the cost vector. So cost vector, for example, I want to communicate with B. I'm at A and I want to communicate with B. So the shortest path, there are multiple paths that can take me to B, but the shortest path that has the least amount of uh, cost is uh, through F. I'll communicate with F and then F will establish an entanglement between me and B and then I can communicate with B. So uh, entanglement uh, swapping, uh, it's a simple, this is a simple swapper uh, protocol. And basically purification is uh, done by uh, polarizing the split and uh, then a classic, a local operation in classical communication. So what does it do that uh, it really connects uh, Alice and Bob, which are far apart and uh, we can uh, establish uh, repeated networks between them at uh, visible distances so that we have a very high amount of fidelity because uh, to do distributed quantum computing we need high fidelity qubits. So, uh, but the problem is that, uh, not a problem, uh, a concern is that 
right? If we are doing n rounds of purification, then we need two n qubit. So uh, keeping in mind, so there there will be a lot of trade-offs. Uh, so then it uh, it really depends uh, the uh, purification results really depend on uh, the quantum channels we're uh, using. So basically, we uh, uh, simulated two uh, channels. One is loss channel. Loss channel is just that if we send a qubit through a, a, a fiber optic, and if we're receiving the fiber optic at the other end, then we get uh, with the p probability, we get the state with p probability, and if the state has been lost, so we get a vacuum at the end with one minus p probability. So this probability really depends on the transmittivity of uh, the optic fiber, and that transmittivity it depends on the characteristic of the medium, and it is given by alpha, and d is the distance. But the problem with this channel is that uh, the probability, uh, the loss channel, it, it becomes multi multiplicative, it's not additive. So uh, as I showed earlier, that the cost should be additive, uh, axiomatically by definition, to implement cost vector analysis, we must have uh, such quantities that are additive. So uh, the loss channel cannot behave as a uh, cost. But we know that there is a uh, mathematical tool of logarithm. So if we apply logarithm to the uh, transmittivity function of the uh, route, so we can make into a additive function. So. And the other one is dephasing, where your uh, bit flips. So if it is one, so uh, it will become zero. And then that dephasing channel uh, depends on the time. Uh, it has a characteristic time in which the uh, your bit starts to uh, dephase. So the probability also becomes multiple multiplicative for this uh, uh, channel. And we again use this. Uh, logarithm. So now what we have done, we have used uh, quantum channels and conformed them with the uh, cost vector analysis. So we call this quantum cost vector analysis. And uh, once we have the underlying theory, now we can go to what are the algorithms that we can use. So shortest path algorithm is just that uh, the uh, 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 controlling the global controlling uh, uh, body, which is the QNET in our case. Uh, QNET is a package, uh, routing package that is given by Dr. Peter. It's available at GitHub. Everybody can check. So, uh, shortest part, uh, uh, QNET, what it does, it finds, uh, it checks what are the lowest costs between the two users, and then it picks out the shortest uh, cost, uh, the smallest cost, and says, Okay, this is your uh, uh, this is your path. You can use this one. And then there is another greedy multipath uh, algorithm, which is just the shortest path algorithm, but it is uh, used iteratively. So if you have used the first path, which is the shortest path, then it will uh, say if okay, you want to use another path. Here is the next to cheapest path. So that is this one, which is which has a cost factor of three. But Dr. Peter, uh, he introduced uh, uh, another algorithm, which is multi-user algorithm. So it's a uh, graph partitioning problem. Graph partitioning problems are basically NP-hard problems, and uh, they're very difficult to solve. But we, again, we use a heuristic approach here uh, and made iterations, multiple iterations on them. So what it does, it distribute, it breaks the graphs into subgraphs and the subgraphs are each user pair uh, is uh, given a subgraph where, uh, which contains uh, the source, the uh, destination, and the routes between them. And uh, it is kept such that no two subgraphs intersect. So uh, for I user and for J user, subgraphs, uh, intersection of the subgraph is a null set. Okay, so the total graph is the union of all subgraphs. So moving on, uh, he also uh, presented this uh, temporal routing protocol where we just 
give quantum memories, which is similar that each node has a quantum memory and each user pair can route their qubit at a different time. But uh, the problem uh, or the issue is that if you're utilizing quantum memory, then you have to simulate it, it as a link and it's a link in time, not in space. So uh, the, it's, that is why it's called temporal routing because we can make certain layers. Uh, it is up to us that how many layers we want to make. So we can, here it's three layers. So first, uh, first we use a quantum memory and uh, it's the first layer at T1 and then at T2 and then at T3. So let's say at, uh, for instance, uh, the network at T1, it's saturated. There is no way for the user to send its qubit uh, or establish entanglement. Uh, so what it does, uh, what he does uh, is uh, he waits and uh, uses the quantum link, uh, memory link, and goes to the second, second temporal layer, which is a different time. And if even that is uh, uh, saturated and there is no path in that, so it goes to the next layer. But the algorithm, the QNET algorithm, tries its, uh, 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 the algorithm uh, tries that not a lot of uh, quantum links are used, uh, uh, memory links are used because memory links will add on extra cost and uh, it will just uh, increase the, uh, decrease the efficiencies and fidelity of the uh, entanglement. So this is my work, and uh, I, I first started with the, uh, uh, Dr. Peter in his paper. He uh, presents a proof of concept with uh, lattice topologies, and I present uh, I replicated the work with a tree network. So this is a, a four-level tree network, and uh, uh, at the second level there are four branches, and at the second level there are three branches, and at third level there is uh, only two branches. So uh, this network has 41 user pair and I tested it. Uh, also all the links here are given a uh, cost uh, loss parameter and dephasing parameter of 0 0.1 decibel. So, uh, and then we tested the routing algorithm, how the routing algorithm works uh, and uh, for 20 user pairs. But as I've told you before that uh, Tree networks are not very good at accommodating a lot of uh, uh, user pairs. So uh, uh, this uh, network will definitely fail at uh, 20 user pairs. But, but just for the proof of concept, uh, we know that uh, because this will be using uh, single path routing, so we see a linear trade-off between fidelity. So as the efficiencies increase, that uh, that means as the shortest path becomes short, so the efficiency is uh, high and fidelities are also high. But uh, as it decreases, so it's a linear trade-off basically. But now what I did uh, in uh, tree network, simply they do not uh, allow you to have multiple routing. So I added some extra links, so I call this kind of topology as a connected tree. So a connected tree will has twice many edges as uh, a simple tree. So a simple tree will have uh, n minus one edges where n is the number of nodes. So and uh, connected tree will have two times n minus one uh, uh, edges. So this really allows uh, each user to find different new paths between them. But again, it's not, uh, the, all the parameters are the same, but here I specifically mentioned uh, that each user must use two paths between uh, uh, source and the destination. So we see that uh, if there are 20 users, so there won't be a lot of options. There is very few uh, data points uh, like the gradient tells us that the black color is less than uh, 25 uh, trials. So uh, we see this, the linear trade-off is still there. There are users who, who are using single paths, but there are some users which are 
in fact using multipath and because they are using multipath and they can perform the uh, purification uh, through the entanglement from different paths so their fidelity although their efficiencies are quite low but their fidelities are very high and that is what we we were looking uh, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, anticipated quantum computing so here's a comparison in terms of, here i have made a temp temporal routing in uh, net Uh, tempo uh, comparison in temporal routing where uh, memory cost is uh, changed and uh, number of users so it uh, it depicts basically two of the uh, protocols that is that are represented by qnet and one is that uh, a temporal routing is a feasible way and multi users can be accommodated so let's see keeping in mind that uh, multi user is uh, multi user routing is uh, breaking the uh, graph into sub graphs so let's see what is happening here so this is a 12 cross 12 uh, that is network and this is a 654 uh, 3 so if we see that for the first uh, user pair uh, the lower uh, the lower surface is for efficiency and the upper surface is for fidelity so keeping that uh, keep keeping that in mind if we really look at the, the uh, lattice we see that the efficiency values are very low that means that the network is not optimized and it it goes a little beyond 10 users before it starts optimizing and uh, same for the uh, connected tree but for connected tree because the distance between uh, any two uh, arbitrary users is logarithmic and in uh, let us say linear so we really see that there is a uh, difference between the efficiency as well and then there is a depth this depth uh, corresponds to uh, the optimization so uh, i i restricted uh, i said uh, when i was simulating this so i told the qnet that uh, okay when when you're simulating for user pairs so keep uh, allow each user pair to have uh, three routes uh, three paths so what qnet is doing uh, qnet is uh, optimizing the network in such a way that for 10 users it is letting Uh, the user pairs to have uh, three parts and we can see here in the sec uh, third column that uh, the probability of uh, finding three parts is 100% is one so that means that uh, it is using a lot of uh, uh, it is uh, impro uh, letting multi path routing in that and after that there is a threshold where the graph is flattening and for lattice it is a little late around 60 or 50 but for a connected tree it's right about 40 user pairs and we can see that from here so what what is happening that as the competition is increasing so more and more user pairs want to find paths and if everybody is using three paths then the network will become a lot saturated and it won't accommodate more pairs so qnet is uh, keeping a check on this so it says okay it, you can go back to two parts routing and uh, we can accommodate a new pair then it keeps on adding new pairs until there is uh, all the user pairs are using single path routing after single path routing if a new user pair is introduced into network what happens is that it will have a hard time finding uh, paths so the uh, probability of finding paths decreases and if we see that there is a uh, that is where uh, it really matters uh, what kind of topology we use so if we see that lattice is accommodating more pairs like for example if it has around uh, 70 or 75 user pairs in this well-processed lattice so there is a around 
the chance that the uh, success user will fail to find a path. But uh, in the same for uh, if we look at the, the connected tree, and for 65, it's right about 60 percent and uh, more. So there, there is uh, so at saturation, we see that the connected tree is not very accommodating in terms of higher competition, whereas lettuce is very accommodating in terms of um, uh, a higher uh, user competition. And this graph also tells us that uh, about 40, for about 40 user pair, there, there is a definite chance that uh, connected tree will provide a single path routing and a single path between them. And for uh, lettuce, that number is extended till 50. That is an important observation. So now we move to the uh, second part, which is the communication part. After distribution part, uh, uh, distributed quantum computation, we move to the communication uh, part. So we, we're using a, a simple QKD uh, secret key formula where uh, M is the number of users, T is uh, tau is the uh, number of temporal rails, and P naught is the probability of failure of the network. And efficiency is for the uh, the average efficiency of the route. So let let me tell you here that I have uh, not uh, in the QNET package, uh, and even in my observation, uh, we have not taken any. Uh, detected efficiencies or uh, any other kind of uh, losses. So we, we are just looking at the uh, connection. We are just looking at the link. So that is why it's just uh, the efficiency of the route. So this is a low competition environment. This uh, is, again, the 12 cross 12 uh, lettuce network. It has 10 user pairs in it right now, and it has three temporal layers. So when we simulate the, uh, uh, when we run this uh, network, the network tells us, okay, the probability of failure for this network at this competition is zero. The, uh, the network is too big to accommodate 10 pairs, so you can, you should not worry about it. But the thing is that uh, a lot of the efficiency, because it's not optimized, because uh, and is the paths between uh, the user pair because as I told you that uh, in quantum internet we want to utilize all of the network so for lower uh, for low competition it is very hard to optimize the lettuce networks so we see that the efficiencies are very low so uh, and a lot of the routing data is for low efficiencies although uh, there uh, multipath is allowed, and the distribution this the distribution that uh, suggests that there is multipath and there is a purification going on. Uh, so fidelities are okay. We are happy with the fidelities, but we are not happy with the uh, efficiencies uh, in uh, terms of uh, secret key and the contours that tell us about the secret key rate, and it is very low. So moving on, in terms of uh, connected tree, connected tree has because the distance between the uh, user pair are logarithmic. So we see that the efficiencies are better, and fidelities are also very high, and that in res that results in the and the probability of path failure at low competition is again uh, zero for connected tree. So we see that there is a lot of uh, uh, routing data that is above this 0 0.15 uh, rate. So that means that uh, out of 100, we will have 1.5 bit remaining uh, usable bit. So, so that shows that uh, okay, connected tree is performing a little better than the uh, letters. And now we've moved on to a high competition environment. In high competition environment, 
uh, the distribution of the routing data they tell us that it's going in a uh, single path uh, regime so uh, there is a linear trade off so linear trade off such as single path routing and uh, the problem uh, this uh, data is collected at 60 user pairs so 60 i considered 60 as a higher competition levels so uh, lattice networks uh, qnet told the, the, okay if you are using 60 users in this network you have a 23.5% uh, chance of failure and if we really see that the, the uh, key rates are uh, the key rates are very uh, they're not changed much uh, but we see that there are more uh, more routing data uh, in the uh, good uh, uh, key rate range but if you look at the connected tree what do we see at higher competition what happens that uh, the connected tree because it cannot accommodate uh, much uh, it it, is, it does not perform well at uh, higher competition so it has a higher rate of failure and that would uh, affect the key rate and we see that uh, although the uh, fidelities and efficiencies are better but because the chances of failure are very high so we get a bad uh, key rate in this uh, simulation so at the end uh, keeping in mind that network topologies does uh, affect our result so I made a network for Islamabad which is the capital of Pakistan and I took uh, randomly I took 14 universities here which have a STEM program and I suggest I made a uh, this is a minimal spanning tree the A figure it's a minimal spanning tree and uh, in a minimal spanning tree each net, uh, each node is connected to its nearest neighbor and nothing else and uh, the B figure it's the connected tree uh, completely a uh, complete tree sorry not tree it's a complete graph so a complete graph means that each node is connected to all other nodes in the network so they, let, let me just give you an idea in terms of the monetary cost so this kind of network just to establish these uh, fiber optic links between them uh, it would cost around uh, sixty thousand dollars and this kind of network, the connect complete network, would cost around 1.1 million dollars. So there is a huge trade-off here. Uh, Muhammad, uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, I think your time is almost over, so it would be nice if you conclude in a faster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just moving sorry on. for the interruption. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So uh, the effects of uh, multiple uh, multipath routing were is so significant that uh, when we're using minimal spanning tree it, it there's a 50 percent chance of failure uh, if there are three users in that network and uh, in connected in complete tree it guarantees a simple uh, it guarantees a simple uh, a single path between any two users and we can see that uh, the QKD contours are uh, very efficient and very reasonable for this uh, tree so we need to make a, a comparison of what do we really want for, with the, our network topology so in conclusion uh, it's just uh, that uh, in terms of performance uh, lettuce does perform uh, in some manner that uh, if we are looking at a high competition environment so we must go for lettuce and uh, like if we want distributed quantum computation and where we do not have uh, uh, much concern about the efficiency so we can use a uh, lattice network but in terms of key rate and uh, uh, low competition uh, using a lattice network is uh, not is so much uh, of a, uh, not a good choice uh, at that so basically uh, what this whole study tells us is that the topology and the routing options are really important for a future uh, quantum internet. And thank you.
Many thanks, Mohamed, for, for your presentation. And uh, we already see that people appreciated a lot the, the efforts and your talk. Thanks from Mark, for example. And uh, yeah, we are slightly over time. So I apologize, but I don't think we will be able to welcome more questions. I anyway, people appreciate it a lot. And I, I welcome you to continue on Discord channel, all the discussions that, that can come along because this question will obviously be very, very uh, hot topic uh, in the near coming future as internet is growing and ambitions are high. So thanks a lot, Mohamed. And uh, I welcome you uh, uh, as all other speakers to, to also greet our audience in your native language. I'm from Pakistan, so basically the Urdu, the Urdu is the national language. So, Assalamu alaikum, Saroko, or Kirtem. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to present Kate about the Chechi talks, who the Chiba Temi, or Inshallah, Kate Temi, and then I say, or science, go progress, Kimi say, and it both a chat or take event about Nazar. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Many thanks.